That is Carcassonne, and that's where we're going to be heading in this video, so come join me. Welcome to my video on Carcassonne. I've just arrived in this beautiful city in the south of France. Some would say the southwest of France, but it's about 80 kilometers east of Toulouse. It's an incredibly historic place. I'm not quite inside the city. I just literally parked up and I've walked into this old cemetery. And in this old cemetery, one, it's very peaceful. And two, it's just behind the city walls, the outside of the city walls, I should say. You see Carcassonne. It's a very old medieval castle. And some say Walt Disney was inspired by it and his uh, Disneyland and Disney World Magic Kingdom. The castle is in a way slightly based on Carcassonne. Now, I don't know how true that is, but it's just what some locals say and what some people have been known to say. Famous things that have happened in Carcassonne. Uh, Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with fly. Think. Well, it's been around since Neolithic times, although the castle itself, I think, was built around the 13th, 14th century. Because it used to be the edge of southern France until, of course, once it expanded to the Pyrenees and the French took more land, France became bigger, it became less of an outpost, but it's always been a link between the Mediterranean and the, the Atlantic. I hope the uh, dead don't mind me talking, but one thing the French really do well are these uh, old cemeteries. Inside these walls, you might recognize some scenes and some of the walls from uh, the film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Classic film from the 90s. Was it good? Jury's out on that one, but I enjoyed it. Well! Ah! We're gonna go in there. As soon as I exit the cemetery, there's gonna be a lot of tourists. Tourist season is back in France. COVID has ended. Well, it hasn't ended really, but the scare has ended. I would imagine I'm gonna see some face masks. But my uh, bandana should I need to be forced to wear it. What a beautiful day. It's about about 32 degrees Celsius. Got my hat on, stop me burning. It looks a little bit ridiculous, I know, but it keeps my nose from burning and my shiny head from burning. Join me while as I explore Carcassonne. Just before I head into the city, I want to give you a kind of an idea of where we are on the map. Uh, the Carcassonne city here with the city walls that we just saw some of as we walked around it. And it's surrounded by, it's kind of wine country. We've got the Limoux, we've got Malpier, we have uh, Carbez and we have Corbiers, one of my favorites. This is a very, very good wine. And the Minervois, very good also. A lot of decent wine. As you head towards this area over here, more sunflowers, more farmland, but this way towards the Mediterranean, a lot of wine. Down here is the old moat, hoping that they would protect the city. And to be honest, it stayed protected for its entire existence. It was only the lower parts of the city, so outside the city walls, that were ever sort of ransacked. Although not, not entirely true. I think around about the 13th, 14th century, the citizens were basically told to leave and they were replaced. And they could only take the shirts on their backs. You can see a real proper castle. Amazing. It's a shame they're using the animals. I think that's a shame. 
basically two city walls. You've got the, the main and the lower. So obviously back in the day, soldiers would walk around these walls. You could walk at the top here. I don't think you can possibly get up there at the moment, but there are some parts of the city walls you can. If you were so inclined, you could walk around the entire city. I might be doing that later. But I think in the meantime, as it just gives you some perspective on just the size of this thing, and you can see the uh, metal windows here. And I mean, just an amazing view, just in case anyone ever got through. You know, just through there. I don't know. In my mind, it's one of Europe's more impressive medieval cities. Seriously impressive. But let's go in, let's go in and explore, and I'll keep the camera rolling. Obviously, if you're a little bit lazy, you can take the horses, but in my mind, I think if you're a tourist, you should never ride horse, horses or carriages because despite what they say, the animals are exploited. And so let's go in. Well, welcome to this video. Uh, click subscribe if you haven't already done so. Apologize for the fact that I'm talking over myself here. It's because I'm in a wind tunnel and the wind was a little bit too distorting, hence the reason I'm cutting over this. But this is amazing. You can literally walk into the city free of charge and explore to your heart's content. Just in case. Now this is a free art gallery to enter just as you come in the main entrance. As you see, I just turned right and into this little room effectively. And every time I've visited Carcassonne, I've walked into this gallery and the art has been different every single time. The impression I get, it's art inspired by the medieval city. Images of soldiers, images of knights, images of so that you would associate with medieval Carcassonne history. And also, obviously, coats of arms and uh, old spears. Some of the objects, I think, like the coat of arms there, I think has been there a while. But all of the art is forever changing and I think whoever the curator is constantly updates this collection. Don't get me wrong, the last time I was in this city was uh, several years ago, but it seems to always forever be changing. And I think some of the art might be on sale, so if you wanted to purchase some of this art, you could if you were so inclined, of course. This area also gives more of an insight into the history of Carcassonne. There's information on um, some of the kings that ruled over this medieval city, the citadel of Carcassonne, in fact. Well, as you can see from that, it's completely free to enter, free to enter the city. You can pay for a tourist guide. Um, advisable, obviously, if you don't want to read about the history, but all the history is there. Just go to Wikipedia, you can read about the history, you can click on everything on Wikipedia. Yes, Wikipedia is biased, but uh, the information is there. Yes, if we can ignore the left-wing bias that is Wikipedia, it is actually a fountain of information and I have to admit I am grateful to Wikipedia um, because it provides me with insights before I go to a place and often after I go to a place and that insight does allow me um, to possibly make these videos better. So obviously you saw from my previous video where this region is famous for its Castellet. You know, Castle Nordre is where the Castellet comes from and Carcassonne is not far from Castle Nordre. And here we have the House of Castellet. I'm sure it's pretty good. And as you see, I just came inside. I went right, so I avoided the main streets. But as you can see, there's a lot of tourists. It's a very touristy place. I decided that I was going to walk anti-clockwise around the city. You could go any way around the medieval citadel, but at this time I was going to go anti-clockwise and try to spiral in. As mentioned at the start of the video, very very briefly in the um, churchyard, there has been inhabitants of this area since Neolithic times. This city, before the medieval city that you see today came to exist, it was of strategic importance because of the hilltop during the um, Western Roman Empire of the 5th century. It was then, like much of the area, 
taken over by the Visigoths. This citadel, known as the, the City de Carcassonne, was added to the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites only back in 1997. Last time I visited the Haunted House exhibition, I was here with a girlfriend at the time. It didn't end well. It was, it's a lot of fun, one good for the kids, I recommend it. As you can see, these streets are perfect for just aimlessly wandering around and taking in the sights and the tourist tat and you name it. There's something for every age bracket here. Obviously, um, a great place to come for lunch, great place to come for dinner. If you like wine, you're not gonna be disappointed because you can drink from the local area. Corbier is obviously the one I recommend. We want the finest wines available to humanity. We want them here and we want them now. My mind, try to avoid the busloads of tourists. This place will get busier again. And this, if you think this is busy right now, it's gonna get busier as uh, the COVID restrictions end and things will get back to normal. I spoke earlier of how the Visigoths uh, took control of the area. They kept control of the area for a good couple of hundred years. The Saracens who basically came up from Barcelona, which isn't too far, in a car you could possibly drive it in probably two and a half, three hours. They came up from Barcelona and took Carcassonne in 725. But thankfully, King Pepin drove the Saracens out who were effectively no better than the present day Islamic State. He drove them out around some 35 years later in 760. And this is when he took most of the south of France, although he was unable to penetrate the impregnable fortress of Carcassonne. Okay, so if I want to go in the uh, main area, I've got to queue up and buy a ticket, I think. I don't remember that last time. In 1067, Carcassonne became the property of Raymond Bernard Trencabel. He was the vice count of Albi and Nîmes. Nîmes is a beautiful city if you ever get the chance. It's, it is right bang in the south of France. And it's quite close to Montpellier. It has one of France's only few bull rings. And thankfully, I believe they may have outlawed that practice, but I could be wrong. There are some sick people still pushing for bullfighting still to this present day. Although I did see the other day how a Spanish uh, bullfighter did get impaled by the um, bull that was effectively being tortured by the bullfighter. But going back to Carcassonne, in 1067 Carcassonne became the property of Raymond Bernard Tran Trancaville. In 1096 the Pope blessed the foundations of the new cathedral, a cathedral that we will see later in this video. I mean, one thing you've got to realise is there has been a settlement in this spot for three, four thousand years and probably longer. But obviously the castle wasn't really any serious kind of settlement until the Visigoths came down. And the Visigoths was you know, related to obviously the Goths and uh, originally hailed from Germania, originally hailed from Scandinavia and they came through into sort of south, the southern France. And they took this area on and off battles in the Gaul region between uh, um, them and the Romans, but uh, now we're going to have a view here. Check. Carcassonne became famous for its role in the Albigazian Crusades when the city was a stronghold to the Occitan Carthars. Translation Good Christians. I think it'd be wise to head up the city walls rather than down. I think on leaving the place, we can head down. But uh, at the moment, always head up. See so what we find. Down here, we have the surrounding city. Countryside, churches. Very beautiful. In uh, 1209, the crusading army of the Papal Legates, led by Abbot Arnold Armoric, forced his citizens to surrender. The Vice Count uh, Raymond Roger de Trencaville was imprisoned and he negotiated for his citizens to be expelled from the city, but only with the shirts on their back, which I spoke of earlier. He was then released, but then strangely, 
he died in his own dungeon three months later. Unknown reasons, I think we could possibly speculate. So inside the, um, the third wall of the city, just walked on through there, obviously as we get higher, I would imagine if you lived here in the old days, and probably still now, the, um, if we can hear through this wind, the houses were probably more expensive, more of the gentry would live higher. It turns out I've just done a, a circle, because this is the entrance I came in, so now I'm going to cut through this way, kind of go back on myself. I didn't realise I just did that sort of circle. But it's very easy to get disorientated when you've got so many, so many winding alleys and but then again, it's just one big circle. It's a reasonable menu there. The uh, duck cassoulet with uh, a sausage, 13 euros. I'm sure you get a glass of wine with that. that. You usually do. Unlike in Paris, where you will get ripped off no matter what. There's very few places that aren't overpriced in Paris. Oh, mayor Vim. Southwest of France is actually pretty good value. Well, hopefully, it stays that way. See, as I stand in the um, moat here of the inner castle, which you have to pay to get into, and I hopefully will get a ticket, but at the moment, it seems there's a massive line and I think it's all sold out. But I'm hoping, if not, I'm going to have to jump over. <laughs> to get in. This is where the royalty, this is where the lords, this is where they would living and they would have a separate drawbridge so just in case that got invaded they would at least have safety here at least for a few weeks if they could last out until someone rescued them. Let us put these friends to death! Okay, I'm not going to hold up the castle. I've been told I must wear a mask to go inside. Hopefully, once they get past the doors, it can come off. Inside, for under 25s, it's free. For adults over 25, it's €9.50. Euros 50. So make of that what you will. Slight discrimination there. As we go through this amazing building, I think it's appropriate to do a little bit more history on the medieval city. Bonjour. In 1240, Trenkeville's son tried to reconquer his old domain, but sadly for him, in vain. The city submitted to the rule of the Kingdom of France in 1247. Fast forwarding, almost a hundred years, the hundred year war began. The hundred year war actually was a little bit more than a hundred years. It was from 1337 all the way to up to 1453, if you remember from your history books. At the time, Edward the Black Prince, who was the eldest son of King Edward III of England, failed to take the city in 1355. So for once, one of the many, many battles between the English and the French. However, to Edward's credit, he did destroy the lower part of the town. These ramparts almost feel like you could be on a set in Game of Thrones. I mean, look out here. A phenomenal view. It's very impressive, eh? It's the wind. So the entrance where we just came in, this is the open space that allowed the defenders of the castle to sort of gather en, en masse. We have people with their, their swords and they're, and they're ready for the enemy to come through the gate. And then the last, obviously, obstacle would be the bridge and then the drawbridge, the moat. The only people that ever ransacked this castle were the Crusaders. And I think it was something to do with the fact that they were on a mission and this then became, well, this became the Crusaders' main points in the region. They would 
based themselves from. And in a way, defending, because they were based here, the, the caliphate never got close. staying in the portcullis and you would have had chains coming through here allowing the drawbridge to open you pull this up pulls the drawbridge open allows the good people in and keeps the bad people out I could be wrong but I think it was down here where the supposed execution was going to happen in the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves and then Robin of Loxy I'll rescue them I think it was filmed down here Here we are out in the main square having walked all along here. I think I came in over there, walked along here. So now, and because of the socialist distancing that is going on where everyone is sort of cordoned off, in a way, it means you're not walking back on people. So there's one positive there, but it also means that you're sort of restrained to following the direction that they must tell you. And there some places are closed, I think because they don't want any bottlenecks. So let's continue. In 1659, the Treaty of the Pyrenees transferred the border province of the Rosaline to France, and effectively Carcassonne's military significance was reduced. Its fortifications were abandoned and the city became, well, what is it is today, an economic center, and it, it concentrated on woolen textiles. It became a center of uh, trade. That was up until the Ottoman market collapsed at the end of the 18th century. And once that had collapsed, the town reverted to a fairly basic country town. I do pick the windy days, has to be said, but what a wonderful, wonderful view. Walking these city walls reminds me of Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik with similar views. You can see the Dubrovnik, you had the, the views of the ocean here with a fair distance away from the ocean, probably around about 80 kilometers to the Mediterranean. You could, you could drive there in about an hour. France, you can usually on the fast roads drive between 110, and sometimes I think 130 kilometers per hour, but then sometimes you have to come down to 90. It really depends on the roads that you're driving on. Oh, I'm a bit of peace. Yeah. I, I'm trying desperately to hold on to my hat. It is incredibly windy in places. Look at this, it's very beautiful. There's a back garden here. That's the first road I came down. Really gives you a perspective on the city. And I'm repeating myself here. Up we go again. I think it's going to take us all the way around. I could be wrong. As we walk past these Roman gardens, and I think pretty much left over from the Romans, or certainly inspired by the Romans, I would like to hopefully persuade you to click subscribe and you'll see more of these videos in the near future. And you'll see um, this is the entrance where I first entered the city right at the start of the video finally got to this point
after I've seen all of the ramparts, I'm going to basically head towards the cathedral, which I think is in that direction. And I think once I've seen the cathedral, other than obviously checking out all the tourist shops and individual restaurants and wine bars, that is pretty much the city, at least the historical part, because obviously outside the city walls, there's a lot of streets, a lot of normal looking houses. I don't want to just suggest that Carcassonne is just the inner city walls of the medieval city because there's a lot more to it. But in this video, I'm just going to be showing you the, the old historical part. This is kind of how I'm walking right now, basically trying not to lose my hat. It's almost come off so many times now it's stuck over my ears and look this is where I started this is the graveyard that's where the video began so we came from the graveyard down there past the little train and into the city walls That's interesting, I just exited the museum and I chose path A as opposed to path B. There was two different paths I could have taken. So on another day you could take path B and it would be a completely different route. It just goes to show there's you have to go twice if you want to see both sides of it. I must have seen the, um, I think the eastern side of the, um, the ramparts and maybe the other path B would have taken you to the western side. As of now left, I won't be able to go back in without purchasing another ticket. And this is the main street, which I avoided because as I came in, it was very windy and I went down this way. So now we're going to go ahead up this way. Obviously, there's a lot of Crusader memorabilia when you come to Carcassonne because obviously the Crusaders had a significant base here. So, you know, they play on that. They sell a lot of medieval type memorabilia. If I recall rightly, up here there's a nice little bit of restaurant space where you can sit amongst the trees and have something to eat. You've got to realise I haven't been here for a number of years, so I could be wrong, but no, I think I'm right. A uh, decent smell of food, you can cassoulets and burgers and pizzas, and, you know, you name it. Pleasing for all tourists, all types. Something for everyone. Crepes, ice cream. Strangely, the city of Carcassonne is twinned with the Estonian city of Tallinn. And if you're curious about Tallinn, I did a video about Tallinn many, many years ago. Check in my archives for that. And now, I think I'm gonna to head towards the cathedral. Although I don't know if it's still a cathedral, but I'm gonna head in that direction. It's obviously still there. Over the last few days, I've been making my way through many of the French beers, some Belgium. Most of these are pretty much Belgian beers. A couple of French ones here. Some good beers. Although, ah, oh, look at these sausages here. Bonjour. The um, French Guard, I think, down here. Okay. French Guard? No. This is the Legion! You're bad! Oh, you die! No. Hold on. They patrol the streets just in case there's any sort of problems. First time I've seen them today, actually. French Legion. And I don't think they like me filming them. The French Legion have a base down in Coulier. If you remember my video of Coulier, I think it was called A Weekend in Coulier. The link's just here if you want to watch it. That's where the French Legion are based. So about, like I say, 70 to 80 kilometers from here. 
I stand corrected. The actual base for the French Foreign Legion is uh, Aubert, which is a district just outside Marseille. However, there is a base uh, near Castle Nordelais, which is only, um, I don't know, 30 kilometers from Carcassonne, so not far. I'll tell you, it's hot now. In a way, I'm glad I'm wearing my hat. Um, clear blue skies, that means I'm not getting burnt on top. When I had my full head of hair, I didn't really need to worry about that. Now I do. I have less of it. As you can see, there's a, there's a lot of cafes around here, a lot of restaurants. This is a, what would have been the local well. Obviously no more. They have obviously got running water now. So the uh, menu's been discounted. Or was it always that price? 14 euros for uh, lunch, not too bad actually. And in surroundings like this, you can't really complain. A clepsicle, one euro eighty. So as you can see, the prices are reasonable. They're not over excessively priced. If you had, I guess, say Barcelona, expensive for here. Incredibly beautiful, not too expensive. Let's have a look. Wow. Ah, oh, there you go. I'm having to run into my parents, and there they are, over there. <laughs> Spidey senses. <clears throat> well, that was a nice surprise. I ended up bumping into my folks. Just had a nice Campari and had a few nibbles off their table. Uh, one of the benefits of uh, not tra quite traveling solo this time. Usually I am in my videos, I'm always solo or maybe sometimes with a friend. But this time I have the pleasure of uh, taking in the scenery with the folks. And here we are, you can see the... Uh... I learnt over the... Uh... Campari I just had. This used to be a cathedral, but now it's a basilica because the, um, the status was lost, I think, I think in the si sometime, I think in the 19th century, but we're going to go find out. This wonderful building is the Basilica of St. Nazareth and Celsus. It is a Roman Catholic minor basilica and it is pretty much on one of the highest peaks after the castle in the m middle of the citadel. Let's go have a look in. It dates back to, I think, 1096, so just a little bit after, or well, 30 years after, Battle of Hastings, 1066. Obviously a different country, but fairly significant dates from English. Really. And it is considered one of France's national monuments. So most likely, this will be a target for some crazed fanatic that hates everything about the West. Please, I hope to God this never happens. But as we know, there have been arson attacks all over France in the thousands over the last five to 10 years. The most famous in itself, which the French authorities are refusing to release the information about, was the arson attack on Notre Dame in Paris. And that clearly was a arson attack. I digress. The original building on this place was constructed in the 6th century. However, the cathedral that you see today, as mentioned, was con constructed in 1096. It obtained historical status in 1840 and the entire basilica is made of sandstone and it's based on the Latin cross. The internals measure 59 meters in total. The nave that you see is 16 meters in width. The choir is apparently something to behold, so if you do get a chance to visit when the choir is in shop, check them out because um, apparently they're rather good.
I always think it's appropriate anytime you do go into a church, a cathedral, a basilica, uh, do leave a donation. You might not be from that faith or that religion, but someone's taking the time to make that church presentable. Someone's taken the time to leave the doors open for you. So put your hand in the pocket and leave a donation. You might disagree with the church, but that really shouldn't matter at that moment in time. You've taken the time to go into the church. It's free to get in. They're not charging you an entrance and light a candle, buy a candle. Think about someone that is no longer around. Give your thanks to the planet for what you do have. And just, if you can, say a prayer. It doesn't even have to be a prayer. Just give your thanks for the fact that you're there in this normally like this building, an amazing building, and what a truly amazing basilica this is. This place did impress me, but then again, the men that have taken the time to build these wonderful churches, aka basilicas, have outdone themselves all over the world, especially in Europe. And the fact that we are seeing with each day these places being targeted by those that for some reason, want to tear down Western civilization, we must stand firm and we must basically say, no, this is our history. This is something we should be proud of, even though this may not be your religion. Be proud of the men and women that came before us and have left way before us. Because if we forget them or we disrespect them, then, then the people we are are nothing. And that was the Cathedral of Saint Nazaire, beautiful cathedral, and I think that pretty much concludes my time in uh, Carcassonne. I'm going to head back down through the city, head out, and then where I go next, you can see in my next video. Click subscribe if you want to watch that, click like if you like this video, double tap the dislike if you disliked it, and um, I hope to see you again. Uh, you've been watching The Wandering Englishman, uh, until next time, cheers.